Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, X.E.L.O. And today I'm actually going to go over a sample flip that I did for They Call Me Heat usually does a Discord sample flip challenge every month, just as well as I do one every month. So I wanted to show y'all my process and what I did with his flip for the month of November. Let's go. This is the sample that he sent in the Discord, so I'm gonna chop it up. And I found a section that I want. I know I kind of started without you guys, but then I decided, you know what, I might as well make a video of me making the beat. So right down here is a section that I found that I'm uh, more than likely gonna use. All right, so I'm gonna use that uh, piece there. So I'm gonna hold down control and you see the little plus sign there. I can grab and drag it down. And now I have a separate track for just the piece that I cut. Minimize this, bring this one a little bigger. And we're gonna bring this to the beginning. So I'm just gonna scroll in and bring this to the beginning of the track. All right, so now that we're at the beginning, let's hit W on there. I'm gonna take off this loop point down here. Now I can decide if I want it to be faster or slower. So I'm gonna scroll in. So right now my tempo is set at 140. Let's actually change that. Let's do 160 maybe, try that. So this is gonna speed the sample up a lot. So I'm gonna hold down Alt at the end here. And you see a little hand icon, I can drag this in. All right, so I'm gonna kind of run with this, how I actually have it. So there's several ways I can approach this sample. I can make different cuts, put it into the sampler and cut them individually. I can kind of leave it how it is. So right now, let's uh, kind of filter it out. So I'm going to use this re-EQ on here. So let's find some drums. Okay. All right, so now I know that I like those drums. So what I'm gonna do is actually slice up the sample itself so I'm gonna put it either, I can use Serato Sampler or uh, in Reaper if I choose this one here and I go and I use this, uh, this MK slicer that they have inside here. So this will give me an option to kind of slice up the sample however I kind of see fit. So I'm gonna try to cut it by the grid. Let's do that instead. All right, so now I can actually do it by just the pitch detection, which I don't want. I wanted to actually do a sampler. So basically what it's gonna do is split it. When I click on this MIDI, it'll actually put it into a resamplematic 5000. So that way I can use my keyboard and chop up the samples even further. Let's turn on the MIDI. So I'm gonna go here and go to input MIDI. I'm gonna make it my complete control. All right, so all of them are sliced up. I can bring it up in the piano roll so you can see it. So this is what it will look like inside the piano roll. Let me stretch this out some. All right, so this is what it looks like now inside of the piano roll. So you can switch them up if you want to. So um, let's see if we can get something going to the beat. So I'm gonna delete these. All right, 
So if you want to get the cuts better, you can always go into the actual resample matics and change up the sample. So, all right, so I can change like my starting and end points. So if I didn't want it to stop there, I can change this. All right, so I think I have the cuts where I want to have them. So now I'm just going to lay down uh, what I just did. So I'm just gonna quantize these real quick. And then I'm gonna do a legato. All right, so after I quantize the legato, this is what it sounds like. All right, I think that's pretty fire. So, um, now what we can do is, uh, I'm going to bounce this down. So what I'm going to do is render this as a track stem. I'm going to mute the original one. All right. And I can kind of just minimize that one. And now I have this so I can split and delete this endpoint here. So now I have the sample here and what's cool now is that I can actually pitch this if I want to, or to mess with the format, anything like that. All right. Uh, I'm going to speed up a little bit more. Let's do 170. All right. So now we have basically the a baseline of kind of where we want to be with the track itself. I like it sped up this way. I actually have it at 180 now. And I just kind of squished in the sample to make it fit. So this is what it sounds like right now. So right now we're at the point where we can actually add a baseline in here. So let's start with a baseline in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of manually move all the things in place, but I'm gonna raise, actually I might leave the bases how they are. It gives it a nice feel. So let's kind of move some of them uh, a little over and in place. All right, so now I have uh, the drums, the sample in place, and I have the bass. So this is what it sounds like all together right now. I think that's pretty dope. So now we just need to add a little treats here and there to give it a little bit more spice, a little more flair. Let me see what I can find and then we'll come back. All right, so I found this sound in a vacuum. I'm gonna just use it to uh, fill out the beat. All right, so I did change the sound to a different sound to give it a little bit more warmth to it. But this is what it sounds like right now. All right, so here we have it. Uh, the sample flip for heat. I want to actually walk you through some of the things I added in here. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I did add, I did add the section of the sample. They are just asking to be home again. So good to have you home again, home again. And I basically just repeat that. I did add a drum fill. I also added a hi-hat loop and I kind of panned them from side to side using Pancake. So I use Pancake to kind of pan them side to side. And I added another hi-hat just to give it even more feel right there at the end. I did change up the bass line for the second part. So it's not as many notes being played inside the bass line. 
Now you may be asking what happened with the baseline in the video. I didn't explain what I did. <laughs> so um, basically, just like in FL, it actually captures MIDI inside of Reaper now. And I have it set up for a button. So I just press the button and it actually loads the MIDI right into the channel itself, which is really cool. So I did uh, break up pieces of the sample out right here at the end of the track itself. And pretty much that's it. That is the beat. So let's start it from the beginning so you guys can hear it and you can be the judge of what you think of the beat itself. So good to have you home. All right, and there you have it. Another one in the books. Really, really do appreciate you guys for stopping by the channel. Make sure you are liking and subscribing to the channel, seeing that this is a new channel created by me. And welcome to Learning Reaper. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right, I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.